Hey, I'll take that. I'd take that any day. Oh my God. So what was it, Robert? Was, was there a, what was that set up? That is a wonderful little anecdote. Go I think that they were in the band of joy then. I, I can't remember who else was there. I just remember John and Robert. It was my sixth birthday. Oh. And honestly, I think my little friends hadn't got a clue what was happening. <laughs> <laughs> I just kept telling them all to dance, you know. Well, and if they, could, if they looked at it now, they might be like, oh yeah. my God, it was, well, they then, they then, the pair of them played at my 18th birthday oh, party. I thought it was, actually, I think it was my 16th. So it was around back then. Um, so, yeah, you know, I mean, it's just, I, as you say, I, soaking it in, I've just been a sponge, really. I've, I've just had all this great music and just grown up with it. Yes. And as you, yeah, as you, fan and, right. you know, all the West Coast, everything. And I, we think we, I think um, you touched. We touched on that story that um, the one time John was out down at the pub, my sister-in-law Pat was away, oh. and mom, my mom was babysitting uh, their their kids. But John was down at the pub, and I was going through all his record collection because he had the most vast album, you know, vinyl collection. And it was all in alphabetical order because John was very precise about things. So it was they were all, you know, so beautifully all lined up. Right. And I just stood there and thought, oh, great, I'm going to start. And I was, I was getting all the way through. And I got to H when he walked in and I was just playing Hendrix. Oh. And um, I hadn't quite, I'd not really heard a lot of Hendrix at that point. And I got it on and I was going, Oh my goodness, you know, and he came in and I thought, oh no, he's going to be mad because I've got all his albums out. And he was great. He just said, go, are you liking Hendrix? And I said, well, I haven't really heard him. He said, stay there, stay there. So he disappeared upstairs and he came back with this real big, I don't know, real old fashioned clunky sort of cassette uh, video player. Right, thing. right. First ones out, you know, they were like huge big things. And he puts this tape and he sits down and um, and he switched it on. It was he was playing me Hendrix from the Isle of Wight live oh. at the Isle of Wight, and it was fantastic. And I think I had my first little dram Bowie with him as well. Oh. <laughs> I don't know if he knew. I think he was too busy winding the thing and putting it on. And I I snuck a bit of his his sure. <laughs> oh, that is spectacular. Does that, that does great. that uh, does that really? And I've I've read a lot of your conversations with people in preparation for our talk and. Was that kind of over the next, you know, 12, 12 years or so that you had your brother around uh, mm -hmm. in your life? Was 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 his was his uh, ability to kind of pass on his musical world to you through that time yeah. as, as, no, you, was, as you grew your own? I mean, that that um, that was towards the end, actually. You know, I must have been well, probably not towards the end. We'd been I went to the south of France with him um, and I was I spoke pretty fluent French back then right and so um i used to go you know do all the shopping with him he was living out there for a while um and uh, oh, all manner of ringo star turned up and, wow. and, and it, was, it was a it was chaotic it was really but um but he he played so much music while we were out there and um we he i really got into in fact i can't even listen to it now without tears coming to my eyes but he was playing Joni Mitchell quite a lot. Um, wow. Court and, Court and Spark album. Yeah. And so that's a big favorite of mine now. So I think the the Hendrix uh, was just before that. So I was around about 15 then. And of course, he passed away when I was 18. So. Right, right. And, um, and Led Zeppelin was, in a lot of ways, there was a blues sense of them that is just palpable. And some of the songs okay. that they, you know, just incredible. Okay. And yeah. was, was as you were growing up and were, were you absorbing their music or because of, you know, because of the relationship you you had with one of their uh, members or did you, know, you were you doing other kinds of things? I know you were playing with Jason at that point, too, a little bit as you grew up. Yeah, I, 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 it, pretty much after John had passed away was when I really when I started playing because I was at school and he was pretty 
you know, he didn't think, I remember mentioning him to him when I was about 15, right. I wanted to be a singer. And he was just like, you're not leaving school. You know, you're wow. staying at school. He, he was very much like that. He, he didn't think that the music industry was any place for his kid sister. Well, look at that, <laughs> big big brother uh, giving you advice oh, like that. Very much. Listen, I snuck off school once. Um, I'd gone to school. I went to a, a convent school <laughs> in oh, Blaine. My. Yeah, honestly. And uh, I got to school, said goodbye to you know my mom at the gate, and oh yeah, cheerio. Got changed, went to the train station, got on the train, went down to London to the Led Zeppelin office. Oh. <laughs> went straight into the Led Zeppelin office because every band was hanging out there. I thought, oh, this is fantastic. Oh my goodness. I we I ended up in a pub opposite the uh the, the office in the King's Road. It was called the World's End. Oh my god. I gosh. just saw this guy walk in who wor worked for John. And he walked in Rex and he across the room he went, You here now. And I went, Oh uh oh. Oh my. <laughs> and he said, I've been ordered to pick you up, get you've got to get in the car and drive you home. Well, home was like three hours away. So <laughs> I went three hours thinking, <laughs> oh. No, I said, what's he, is he really mad? Is he mad? And he went, yeah, he's really mad. Oh. And we drove up the drive. <laughs> and I just remember John standing there at the top of the drive, like, what are you doing? You know? Oh, my God. <laughs> oh, that is incredible. A very protective brother and a, and a beautiful big brother, you know. He, oh. he really was. Well, he that was is. Not that... the person that sometimes gets talked about about the you know the guy that was on tour he wasn't that at home at all he was a big family man and and really protective and, and i see now why you know i totally get it because it it, it, it wasn't a, a great a great place for women back then and he knew that 